This is Michael Oral from MobileBurn.com and we're going to take a look at some of the functionality of the Motorola Droid for Verizon. Got the phone app pulled up just so you can see what it looks like right now. Simple dial pad, call log, and of course contacts. A lot of functionality in the contacts now since there are so many different accounts that can be added to the device. You can choose which accounts you're going to sync up with. You can see we've got um, two Gmail accounts and Facebook synced up right now. You can also sync up Exchange, and if we go into display options, you can see how you're given options in terms of which groups from each source you want to select or have displayed, which is pretty handy. Of course, there's favorite contacts, which has just the starred contacts as well. One of the things that is new to Android 2.0 is the ability to tap on contact photos and get quick access to direct functionality, you know, email, messaging, view the contact, or call them. Of course, if you pick somebody with Facebook linked up, you also get a status message and the ability to go into Facebook and, you know, if there's no email address, there won't be an email icon there. It's pretty handy. There is voice dialing support on the device, but since there's no hardware call send and call end keys, there's no easy way to dial um, voice dial except to pull up the application from the menu or on the home screen. Call John Doe. You can see we have John Doe right here. We'll call him. You'll notice that there is Google Voice support uh, integrated right into the device. You can have it prompt or um, automatically use Google Voice or regular calls. Uh, text messaging is not integrated into the main Android system, though. It uh, goes into its own separate Google Voice application. The home screen does work in landscape orientation as well. So you can do it this way for the rest of the review on just because it makes it a little bit easier to see. If you grab this status bar up here, pull it down, you can see we've got a text message. This shows the threaded SMS view. And you can also see, if you look up there, that we have a new visual voicemail. I'm going to turn on the speaker, and then we're going to play the message. The text message for the Verizon Motorola Droid visual voicemail system. And now we can remove it. I'm going to pull up Gmail and take a look at it. See, it looks pretty much like the uh, prior generation of Gmail on Android, except now you have some additional options. Uh, of course, we've always had the ability to you know, view starred messages and things like that, so you know, we can look at an example of some formatted text. You can see it's a normal threaded Gmail view. But on top of that, since there's support for multiple accounts, we can select the account we want to view. And of course, still do the same thing. Look at starred messages. Unfortunately, there's no combined Gmail box, which would have been nice. There is, however, a combined email box. You can see I've got two AOL Instant Messenger um, email addresses set up here. I can look at either one of them individually just by tapping on it. There's the new combined box as well, and you can see the color coding. It might be a little bit difficult um, on this. Is you know it's purple here, blue, and these are all purple. So most of them are purple. There's just a couple of blue messages thrown in, like at the top. You can also look at starred messages only, which is for both accounts. Just so you can see briefly what it looks like. You know, very simple uh, mail program works pretty well. Um, and you'll notice down here, a little folder icon. This allows you to go in and select different folders. Now, if you're using an IMAP server with a lot of folders or Exchange with other folders and stuff, this is how you get to them. It's worth noting that um, Exchange support um, is decent for the inbox, but you will not get new mail notifications for any messages sent directly um, into a subfolder through a filter or something like that. This is the default calendar, um, which syncs up to only the first Gmail account. Uh, you can have multiple calendars inside there, so you could have um, you know other public or other shared calendars linked up into this. But you can't use um, just both of the Gmail accounts that you have linked up. You'd have to actually share the account, uh, the calendar from one to the other in order to be able to view it on the main one. Of course, we have um, day view, agenda view, all sorts of things like that, repeating and um, reminders as well. 
corporate calendar looks just like that, except it works um, from the exchange and only from the first exchange account if you happen to have multiple exchange accounts. This Facebook application comes pre-installed on the device and it takes advantage of the new synchronization API on Android 2.0. This is how the contacts get integrated into uh, the main contacts application. It's a pretty decent Facebook application. I'm not a heavy Facebook user at all, so I wouldn't be the best judge of that, but it seems to work pretty well for me. did have a few problems um, uploading photos. Eventually they went through, though. If you're looking for an application that's not pre-installed, though, you need to go to the new Android market, which you'll notice is now white um, versus what we saw on Cupcake in earlier versions. Really nice functionality here. Uh, the, the application is definitely better, better sorting, um, like that you can view top paid or top free and just new applications. So if you're not looking to spend any money, it's very easy to find what's new and interesting in terms of free apps. You can, of course, always search as well. If you want to download and install an application, it's quite easy. You just select one from one of the catalogs. You can read about the application, look at some screenshots and user comments. Tap on install, agree to some security issues, and you'll see the downloading icon comes in the task tray right there. Oh, download just completed. It's now going to install automatically and we'll get a notification uh, when the installation is complete. It's done now. Tap on it to launch it. The music player on Android 2.0 looks pretty much the same as the other version. You have music sorted by artist, album, track name, and of course playlist support as well. It's a home screen widget. It's not too many uh, home screen widgets included on the device, but you can download new ones. Like, you know, I have this bell, and my son finds that amusing. Uh, a little bit of weather widget there I put in. And here's the default music widget. This is also a default widget here for uh, controlling screen brightness, automatic data synchronization, GPS, Bluetooth, and Wi Fi. If you long press on the home button, it'll bring up recently launched applications, not necessarily applications that are currently running. This isn't a multitasking screen or anything, it's just things you've launched recently. You can pull up the YouTube client, um, you can search by category and some things like that. Uh, I'm just going to do a generic search here and pull up a previous search item. It's one of the videos I recently shot of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Pureness. This is coming through on a 3G connection. So the quality is uh, not too great by default. There is a watch in high quality mode, but it takes a long time to buffer over 3G. And I've been having some problems with uh, Wi-Fi in YouTube, while Wi-Fi has been working fine with other applications. But you can see once it comes up, quality is pretty decent. 